Hello Haskellings. Well, F-sharp A-sharp posted the most amazing solution on Reddit to yesterday's problem. And it involves actually reading in the input file into Haskell and parsing it like a Haskell expression. But first you have to change the precedence of the existing Haskell expressions by creating a new plus operation which does the same thing as the existing one with different precedents. It's just then a matter of reading in the file and then of course because we need to add each line together we need to add in an open parenthesis at the start of every line and then at the end of every line we need to add in a close parenthesis and a plus sign. We delete the last plus at the end of the last line and that should work. So let's give that a go and see what the output is. And there you go, it's the same output as last time. Now for part two, you can just increase the precedence of the plus operation to above that of the multiply operation and get the output for part two. Now for day 19, and we have yet another parser to write. The input is in two sections, so we're going to use our interactG function from day 6 to split that up. Let's have a quick look at it, and then we'll pattern match in the f function to grab out the rules and the strings. We're going to need to parse each rule separately, and then somehow combine these, so let's start with the rule parser, which will map over our rule strings. It's going to take in our string and return us a tuple consisting of the rule number and then a structure representing the rule itself. Let's split the string up into words to extract the rule number. We use read on the init of n to get the number out after dropping off the trailing colon character. Before we can proceed, we need to define the rule structure. First we could have a letter. Next we can have a rule followed by another rule which we'll call both. Actually let's call that AND. Then we have an OR rule. And lastly we need to be able to refer to another rule so we need a C rule. The reason I define it like that rather than putting the ints directly in the AND and OR rules is so that we can later collapse it to a tree which I know is possible because the puzzle explicitly mentions that there are no loops. So we have this hammer called build expression parser, which we learnt about yesterday. And this puzzle really looks like a nail, so let's see how far we get with that approach. Once again, we'll need a term parser and an operator table. The terms will be our letters and rule numbers, so we can use our integer parser for the rule number and either the between parser combinator or these neat applicative operators to parse the quoted letter. We have to extract a rule from these, so we use fmap on the respective constructors to do that. Unfortunately, this time we can't just remove all the spaces, so we need to deal with them. We can do this by simply eating up any trailing spaces on every parser. We don't eat up leading spaces, because then each parser would start the same, which leads to a lot of backtracking. So the operations we'll need are the AND and OR ones. The AND one will just eat up space and return the AND constructor. And at a lower precedence, the OR parser will parse a pipe character and again any trailing white space. It then yields the OR constructor. OK, let's see if we can actually have a look at our rules. And we still need to actually run our parser, so we can do that for now just over unwords of x's prime. We also need to import text parsec expra. And parse returns an either value, so let's grab that out of there and then pattern match on the right constructor, which will then just crash when we get a parser error. But that looks good, so let's create a map out of our list of tuples. 
Well, I've changed my mind about collapsing the tree because I think we can make a parser directly from this map. So let's give that a go. Our mcParser function will take in the map from int to rule, and also a starting rule, and then return us a parser. We only care if a string will parse or not, so the parser can return unit. We start with a letter rule. It will parse that character, but we want it to throw that value away, so we can use the void function to do that. Void is defined in control.monad and can work on any functor. Let's have a quick look at that in the REPL. As you can see, it's like doing an fmap and replacing values with unit. So onto the AND rule, and it just needs to fetch recursively the two parsers from x and y, and sequence those together. The parser for OR rules will also fetch the parsers for x and y recursively, but makes them alternatives. We shouldn't forget that they might have a common prefix, so we need to use try on the first. Lastly, the C rule will look up that rule in the map and then process it. So now we can make a parser from rule 0. Let's test it out now. And typos aside, we should be getting back a left or a right value there. And we do. So Let's now create a check function that will check to see if a string is parsable by those rules. We have to make sure that the parser is parsing the whole string, so we sequence with EOF. We use isWrite to see if we had a successful parse, and now we can map over all of our input strings to count how many could be parsed. So let's check that. And that's a gold star. Now, part 2 has us changing some rules which introduce loops, but it hints that it's a special case. So let's take a closer look at the input file. Rule 0 includes the two changed rules, 8 and 11, and when we search for those elsewhere, we only find their definitions. On close inspection, the new rule 8 just allows for many rule 42s and the new rule 11 allows for many rule 42s followed by the same number of rule 31s. So in summary, that means that the new rule 0 should contain a number of rule 42s followed by a smaller number of rule 31s. We create parsers for rule 42 and 31 in the same way we did for rule 0. Then we can make a parser do block to sequence many 42s and many 31s. Even though our parsers just return unit, many1 will still give us back a list of them, so we can still count them to make sure we have strictly more 42s than 31s. If so, then we return unit to indicate a successful parse, and otherwise use fail. We're not quite done yet, because if 42 can parse a prefix of 31, then it might consume input that it shouldn't. So we again need to use try here to roll back the input if that's the case. Okay, nice, let's check that. Just 12 gold stars to go. Happy Haskelling!